All right, guys, here we are making part two to the GoPro's Hero 8 and 9 Black with the mods and the accessories, using them in like a vlogging style uh, and what I think is the best setups that I could do with these cameras. I use them all the time. I've been using GoPros for years, making all my videos. I'm happy with them. I like the color science I use. I like the ease of use, the durability, everything. I think GoPros work out perfectly. But they, I mean, are they a perfect camera? No, they're an action camera, you know? I'm using my Sony RX100 Mark 7 right now, but I don't like hiking with it, riding my boosted board or anywhere where I could damage it. That's where the GoPros come in. And I was using the GoPro 8 for the last year and before that the 7, the 6 and so on. Now the 8 was really, is still a really good camera. And just because I got the 9, I'm not gonna get rid of the 8. But the 8 I had some issues with, you know? The first one was, there's, the lens doesn't come off, so the ND filters, I had a hard time. The only one I could find to work with the media mod was this QKOO company. Never heard of them before, but, uh, but I mean, they work, they're okay, but they don't line up flush, so they could knock off. Now, switching over to the 9, the 9 is a bigger camera, has a bigger lens, shoots in higher resolutions. Um, they went back to the removable lens. Thank you. I got my Polar Pro filters. Uh, if the lens itself got damaged, I can order a new one. Depending on how bright the day is or how not bright it is, I change the, uh, the level of density on the ND filter. And I I'm happy. I'm happy they went back to that because Polar Pro, I think, makes the best ND filters out there. And I just have to go back to them. So. They did that. Now, the media mod itself, it's, uh, it's bulkier. I mean, I know it's bigger because it's a bigger camera, but it's more durable. I mean, look at that mic setup versus what the 8 is. So there's uh, the 9, and here's the 8. It's got like this nice, better durability to it. I like it. They also, they both have the same plugins on the back. You have your 3.5 millimeter jack. You got your USB-C. You got your mini HDMI. But when they're not in use, you have these rubber covers that lock into place to keep the dirt, the moisture, and all the crap out so that's why you don't ruin your gear. It, uh, it's got the same two cold shoes, so you can use the, uh, the mods to connect to it. I don't have the light. I never, I, I might get it, who knows. But what I did have, or I do have on it, is the display. So when the display is not on, you got the, uh, you got the display in the front and on the back. So you can, shoot, you can see what mode you're shooting in, from the front, you can uh, you know kind of line up your shot. You do have the option of whether it's the full display or a close-in box. It also tells you how much battery life left, how much left on your SD card, and what your frame rates and all that shooting in. Now, when you turn on the display, all of that disappears, and all the display action happens on the display itself, and all the pertinent information from the camera stays on the camera. How many clips I'm shooting with what my frame rate is, my resolution, how much battery life is left, how much is left in the SD card, and then on the display itself shows you how much battery life is left in the display. So I know what you're asking, why would I want to put on display if it's got it inside? Well, first of all, I have it, why not? And second of all, I mean, it is a bigger screen. So when I'm in a situation where I'm gonna be able to use the display without worrying about damaging it or, or whatever, I'm gonna use it, but when I'm not, I'm gonna keep it off and use it inside of there. So this way, you know, no harm happens to it when I'm hiking or whatever I'm doing, if it's a little bit rougher, and I don't have to worry about it. But if I do have it and I'm not using the eight, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the display on the nine. I think it's cool. I think having that option is nice. Now, I was at De Cordova Art Sculpture. I'm gonna screw it up, I'll put the name down here. Anyway, it's in um, Lincoln, Massachusetts. I went out there over the weekend and I shot some videos with the nine in 5K24. Let me show it to you now. Had some fun out there, but just keep this in mind. I shot in 5K, uploaded in 4K. So just keep that in mind, but let's roll the clips. We're at the De Cordova Outdoor Museum, enjoying the scenery. Right now I'm not wearing a mask because I am not within six feet of anybody else. And as people come in, I do have my mask and I'll be popping it on. So don't worry, I am following all the rules and regulations and trying to behave. It looks like folded up sweaters.
Big Rock. Okay, so flipped over to the eight black. This is gonna get really confusing real quick all day today. But here is my nine, and I have it on the GoPro Shorty. There it is with the Polar Pro filter, and it's got the, uh, the view back screen built into it. A Little bit chunkier, has a bigger battery. I think it needs a bigger battery if you're gonna have that screen on the front and the back at the same time especially. Um, right now I've been filming for it. Do you mind? I'm shooting here. Inside one of the tunnels. Oh, almost took a header on video. <laughs> that wouldn't have been good. Can't climb on it though. Can go through it, but can't climb on it. All right, I'm not pretending to be sophisticated or an art connoisseur. Some of the stuff I just don't understand. Okay, so let me explain the situation. We tend to do this a little bit. <laughs> we started off at De Cordova, and there's these trails where you're flying out. They mix it in with the with trails, kind of hike around and stuff. And once again, we got lost. We're somewhere traveling on the outskirts of De Cordova. When I open up the map, we're, we're close. We're just having a little bit of a hard time trying to find our way back. But we've done this before. We're professionals. We'll get there. But being honest, some of our best adventures involve getting lost. All right, so we're gonna try another path today. We know it's to the right. That we know for sure. We're gonna see if it's this one. Civilization. We found the parking lot. We're good. No need to send on any rescue parties. Okay, so that was a Gilligan's Island three hour tour. I land right back in the same hour, exact spot that we took off in. All right. All right, so here I am with the GoPro Hero 9 in the full format. Let me get some video for you. Got my Rode Wireless Go connected to the side. I got the display on it. Got the Polar Pro. And now it sets up my shot. So this way, got the display, can frame everything if I wanted to. And I think it's perfect. I think this is the best possible setup you could do if you got the GoPro Hero 9 Black. Now, I am still a fan of the 8. I'm not getting rid of it. I still see myself using this in the future, but when I'm using the 9, this is ideally what I'm gonna use when I'm shooting with it. So a couple of things I do want to mention with it, and it's not so much problems as it is some workaround just to keep in mind. So for starters, the one potential problem, I'm not sure if it's going to be one or not in the future, the wire or cable that they have connected for the HDMI to the uh, media mod, it's a bit long. So you have to kind of bend curl it and so it could plug in just right into the media mod. I'm just afraid of that wrap around like that if it's gonna damage the inside wires down the road. Maybe I'm worried about nothing, maybe I am, I don't know, who knows, we'll find out down the road. But uh, that's one. Now the other thing too is, when you are using the display, whether it's on the eight or the nine, you have to power it down to be able to access anything you wanna change in the camera. If you wanna go into uh, slow-mo or time warp or just change the, uh, the, uh, the settings on there to whatever you wanna change it to, depending on your action. You just gotta plug it down, uh, power it off really quick. Uh, change to whatever setting, power back up, or actually have no access. The, the display itself is not touchscreen, so just something to keep in mind. Again, not the biggest issues in the world, just what you need to know you have to work around. But anyway, this is all just a lot of initial. I took it out that one day at the Diego Dover. I did a little bit of shooting here and there, but I'll be making more videos, and I'll keep you apprised of how, how I feel it's going with it. But so far, very impressed. I always have been with GoPros, so I foresee nothing but good things, but I'll keep you apprised of how it's going on. If you do have any questions about it, hit me up below. Let's, uh, let's get a conversation going. If you like the video, give me the old thumbs up. And if you want to see more, subscribe. Later.